It's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's Blender's Grease Pencil versus Moho. What can they do? Grease Pencil is an object in Blender that was designed primarily with the intent of integrating 2D animation into a 3D software, while Moho is a very affordable way of creating high-quality 2D puppet animations. So what makes them special? For Grease Pencil, it's the extremely unique workflow it brings into the scene. As most 2D animation software, whether they are made for vector, bitmap, frame by frame, or rigged puppet animation, still follow and apply the same principle of working on a 2D surface. Grease Pencil, however, regardless of what it can do, is still a 3D object at its core, so it behaves as one. The strokes created from this object are composed of points that serve to save the physical properties of our object, including its coordinates in a 3D space. They also serve as anchor points between edit lines that form the final shape of our stroke. It's basically a vector line with quite literally an extra dimension of complexity. In terms of interface and workflow, it's very straightforward. It's accessible through a simple right click, and for one object, it does have quite the interface. In order to fulfill its 2D animation purpose, it's compatible with a timeline that also supports relatively detailed onion skinning. And it supports a variety of different textures and material brushes, making it not only incredible for frame-by-frame -frame 2D animation, but also concept art and storyboarding, since you can take advantage of different light engines and very advanced camera manipulations to suit your needs. Other than the standard draw mode, and with this being a tool in a 3D software, you can, as you would expect, rig 2D cutouts and create puppets that you are able to animate later with weight paint. Meaning you can also take advantage of pre-programmed motions and even physics engines for your models. There is also a deformation option with sculpt mode in a manner reminiscent of liquify tools in other programs. But perhaps the best part about all this is that this tool is included in the default install of an open source program and does not require a separate extension. It is also relatively not very demanding in terms of computing power, so it's very friendly on your wallet considering what it can offer. We all know how ridiculously expensive animation programs can be, with prices that reach the four-digit mark. Moho, however, is exempt from this since Moho Debut, aka the standard version, will only cost you 60 US dollars, with the pro version being one cent short of 400, and it's a one-time buy. When booted up, you will be met with a standard interface containing a timeline and a drawing area. It is worth noting that this program is exclusively a vector program and is made primarily with puppet animation in mind. Regardless of that, it is still very rich in all types of texture brushes and drawing in this program is honestly very satisfying. You can create your own characters and rigs with very precise bone manipulation. And these bones include some dynamics designed to make her life as easy as possible while animating, including things like torque force, spring force, and damping force, which, to keep it short, are designed to automatically control the behavior of any bone by interpolating the movement of other bones. In other words, it's less logistics to worry about. And one last thing about bones, any model can have any number of different limbs that you can switch to in a jiffy, which can be very useful for things like foreshortening and more complex angles and poses. Quad meshes will allow you to distort and animate flat images extremely precisely, and Photoshop support will also allow you to import images directly from, well, Photoshop, with all layers preserved, so you can make those fancy animated splash illustrations used in gaming login screens or character trailers. And last but not least, it has a built-in physics engine, so you don't have to worry about manually animating things blowing in the wind or being affected by gravity or whatever. All in all, it's a very affordable, very comprehensive animation software capable of fulfilling a number of different niches and visual styles. That's all nice and handy, but uh, what about the user experience? To put it bluntly, we wouldn't call Grease Pencil very beginner-friendly, despite Blender as a whole being designed with beginners in mind. In its defense, the customizable interface is very easy to read and the different tools are simple and easy to get used to. The complications lie in the fact that, as established, it is a 3D object and you are working in a 3D space. That and the tools don't behave exactly the way you would expect them to in a 2D software. So whether you are animating or illustrating, it will take a completely different mindset and workflow to get the most out of this program. So yes, it can be difficult to learn, but there is an abundance of both resources and incredible animated projects made using this tool. So it's both possible as established, and it's honestly very intuitive and simple to use. The only difficulty might be in the idea of getting used to an animation software in the case of being a complete newcomer. But other than that, it's honestly very straightforward and relatively easy to use. 
It also offers a large number of automated actions and physics, so you can create breathtaking works in a variety of styles in a somewhat short amount of time. To sum it up, it can be hard for beginners, but it's the case for all animation programs, and other than that, you should be golden. And with that out of the way, let's put our competitors through the final filtration lenses. Grease Pencil is free, <laughs> what is there more to say? Its biggest pro is that it's very affordable, very accessible, and highly flexible in what it can do being part of a 3D software and all. It will allow you to seamlessly and without much of a hassle blend between 2D and 3D animation, which as a technique has been in development since the 90s with programs like Deep Canvas made by Disney. Its utility also extends to the realms of storyboarding and concept art as we have discussed earlier. And it has even been seeing use in high-budget professional productions by virtue of being not that complicated to use. Now yes, the learning curves is very steep, but once you are past that first hill, it's honestly smooth sailing from there. And despite being far more specialized, the same can be said for Moho, as it has more than a reasonable price considering both what it can offer as well as the competition it is up against. It is extremely powerful, highly intuitive, and is overall a great option for amateurs or professionals alike. It does lack optimized frame-by-frame -frame animation options, so if you are looking to master that, it is one niche it doesn't fulfill as well as other alternatives. But if what you are looking for is a program to create and rig character models, or to bring to life splash illustrations with a reasonable budget, then it might just be the program for you. So what's the final verdict? Well, in conclusion, we have two very different programs that belong to very different niches. One being highly flexible but somewhat difficult to learn, and the other being highly specialized but extremely well-versed in its field of expertise. Grease Pencil is the single best way of blending CGI with traditional animation, while still being very affordable. It offers an all-inclusive package to create seamless dynamic shots while still taking advantage, and sometimes suffer the complications, of all things a 3D program has to offer. Meanwhile, Moho is the perfect introduction, but also is a more than suitable program for creating computer animations, regardless of skill level or experience. Both are incredible software, and both are recommended for accessibility and capability. And thus, we conclude a song of war. No programs have been hurt in the making of this video. We would like it, however, to know what you think about these two software and what you would like to see from us next. So please, don't forget to leave a comment, like, and subscribe, hit the bell to not miss out on any of our future uploads, and as always, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care!